Hi everyone, welcome to Practice Problem Receivable 02. This one's going to put your knowledge of journal entries under the allowance method of accounting for bad debts to the test. So here we go. Tiger Corps has the following information related to accounts receivable during February and March 2019. Record all necessary journal entries, assuming Tiger Corps uses the allowance method of accounting for bad debts. So I give you four transactions you just need to journalize them, but you have to do it using the allowance method of accounting for bad debts. So with that said, take a moment, pause the video, see if you can record these journal entries. When you're done, come on back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So we're going to start with A. It says on February 20th, so there's our date for a journal entry, February 20th, Tire Corps sold 50000 worth of inventory for $90,000 to customers on account. So if we are selling goods to customers on account, we're going to debit accounts receivable because customers owe us. They owe us the price that we charge them for the goods. And that is also the revenue that the company gets to recognize. So that's the revenue portion of this transaction. Because this is a sale of merchandise, there's actually going to be two pieces to this transaction. The other piece is we are giving the customers $50,000 worth of inventory. So we're going to credit inventory because it's going down by $50,000. And because that is an asset that is being used up going away, we have to record the inventory expense, which has a special name, cost of goods sold, $50,000. Okay, so this one right here, this isn't actually doing anything with bad debts. This is simply establishing the accounts receivable that we will then have to deal with the bad debts on. All right, let's try B. B says, on February 28th, Tiger Corps estimates that 9,000 of the customer debt will likely not be collected. So notice the key word here is we're estimating that 9,000 will likely not be collected. So this is February 28th. When we estimate that something won't be collected, that is when we establish the allowance account. The allowance account is going to track how much of the AR we don't think we're going to get. It's a contra asset. And as part of establishing that contra account, we are also going to go ahead and hit our income statement with a bad debt expense. So debit, bad debt expense, 9000 Credit allowance for, I'll spell it out the first time, doubtful accounts, 9000 So this bad debt expense, even though this is simply an estimate, we are actually going to put this expense on our income statement as if the cost was already incurred. So we're sacrificing a little bit of income statement accuracy in order to present on our balance sheet that, hey, of that 90000 we don't think we're going to get 9,000 of it. All right, let's go to C. C says on March 4th, Tiger Corps received notice that a customer owing $2,000 had declared bankruptcy and would not be repaying its debt. So this right here is what we call a write-off. When we know an account will not be collected and therefore we um, take the necessary action to deal with that. Now, since we know the account won't be collected, we're going to go ahead and take that account off of our books. So credit AR 2000. Also, since we now know a portion of our AR is not going to be collected, we no longer need that portion of the estimate that we previously established. We estimated nine would not be collected. So far, we know two has come true. Well, we only think seven more won't be co collected. So we're going to reduce that estimate by debiting allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm just going to abbreviate it from here forward, doubtful accounts. Okay. So what this is going to do is this is going to bring our estimate, if we were to draw a ledger for this, this is going to bring our estimate down to seven because two has come true and we think seven more is going to happen still. All right, that brings us to D. D says, on March 20th, Tiger Corps received $500 from the bankrupt customer's liquidation proceedings. So we're actually getting money this day, and we're getting money for a receivable that we already wrote off. Now, let's throw that out the window for a minute, and let's imagine, well, what if we had simply gotten paid for the receivable? Well, the journal entry would look like this, debit cash for 500 
credit AR for 500. However, this AR is not on our books to collect at this moment because we took it off the books in part C, all right? So before we can actually collect the cash, we have to take an initial step of putting the AR back on the books. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna do that by reversing the write-off that we previously did, at least for the portion that is now gonna get collected. So to reverse that write-off, we simply flip-flop what we originally did for the write-off. So we're gonna debit AR, put the 500 back into the uh, accounts receivable. We're gonna go ahead and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. In other words, we're gonna put that estimate back. So the logic here being, hey, we reduced our estimate because part of it had come true. Well, now that this portion of it, this $500, hasn't actually come true anymore, we've got to put that $2,000 back into the estimate, okay? So now we're assuming um, $7,500 more won't be collected rather than $7,000 more as we did before. But notice the result, the combined result of these two journal entries is we put the 500 and AR back on the books, we put the estimate back for that portion, then we get paid, and we take that AR back off the books. Technically speaking, we could have just left this AR out of the journal entry altogether and simply debited cash credited allowance for doubtful accounts, but it makes a little bit more sense when you break it up into the various components and see it spread out this way. All right, that was it for your um, Allowance for Doubtful Account journal entries. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.